It's actually a little bit hard to imagine that something like wheat gluten, just the flour, is going to taste like meat, but it actually will. Hi friends and the warmest welcome to the kitchen. We are entering a festive season. Happy Diwali to anyone who has celebrated Diwali. And we are entering the Thanksgiving and Christmas season. So if you're thinking of a recipe of centerpieces recipe, I'm going to be here every week throughout till Christmas to give you some inspiration or to help you with some ideas. I'm going to cook some recipes. We're going to try and experiment. So probably you will find something that you love and that you can also serve to your vegan and non-vegan friends and family. So everyone around the table is happy because vegan food is actually nutritious, good, flavorful. So you can show off a little bit. Now I'm going to make a couple of recipes, including this one. I'm going to be making a seikan with some roasted vegetables, with some garnishes, with some sides. So we are going to cook seikan the easy way with wheat gluten. And I've drawn some inspiration from YouTube, from other YouTube creators. And of course, I've cooked a couple of other fake meats recipe, fake fish recipes. So those are also in the base of this. We are going to be using vital wheat gluten, which is quite popular. However, if you're gluten intolerant, I'm really sorry. I'll get another recipe for you. This is not going to be suitable for anyone who is gluten toler intolerant or for anyone who has celiac disease, of course. And uh, I mean, this is a festive meal, but this is going to be flavorful. This is going to be amazing. Very nice meaty texture. It's going to take some time, but I promise you will not regret it. And we're starting with the dry ingredients. One cup of vital wheat gluten flour, and it's actually 70 to 80% of protein, pretty impressive. Third of a cup of nooch or nutritional yeast. Quite rich in vitamins B, also can be enriched with selenium, so look that up. One teaspoon of garlic powder and around half a teaspoon of celery salt. If you don't have it, just replace with regular salt. Dry saute onions and garlic. Watch the sound. It has to stick to the pan. Sticking to the pan is not a bad thing actually. So once they caramelize, we can add them to the wet ingredients. Add tofu 100 grams to the blender as well as onions and garlic. A lot of flavor in meat usually comes from spices, from vegetables. So there is an opportunity to introduce chicken, turkey or beef flavor into your meal, something like this. And this does not contain any animal products in it. You dissolve five milliliters of one spoon of this in a cup of water. Do not overeat it, of course. It's not really whole food, plant-based, not the healthiest thing that you can eat, but still a thing to diversify your diet. It's kind of a little bit crazy. I swear, it smells like chicken stock. If you really miss chicken flavor, I swear it does smell like chicken. Add broth to the wet ingredients. You can use immersion blender as well. I don't own one, so I'm just using my food processor. One teaspoon of maple syrup, one tablespoon of tahini. Tahini is needed here because we are reintroducing fats into the seitan, because as you can imagine, turkey or any kind of meat has some fat, while the wheat gluten flour is, well, almost purely protein. Then I'm mixing wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. I find it a little bit less messy and I'm just adding it bit by bit and let it all come together. Seitan is basically dough, so we need to knead it and uh, we have to do it for around eight to 13 minutes, uh, enough so it doesn't stick and so it's not too fluffy or too soggy and not too much so it's not stiff. And here I'm adding around third of a cup of gluten wheat flour so it doesn't stick and it kind of bounces back. Meanwhile, I'm creating a little bit of a veg broth. Uh, this is a store-bought one. Of course, I was too lazy to cook my 
own and I'm just following instructions on the package and we will need it for cooking the seitan. I'm also preparing two red onions, around 10 garlic cloves, some two stalks of celery and bay leaves uh, and some mushrooms, these are oyster mushrooms and I'm adding them to the pan so I can simmer the seitan in it so I'm arranging some space in the middle. I'm also going to add a little bit of a soy sauce inside the veg broth. Great tip that I learned from the avant-garde vegan is that you can coat your seitan in herbs. This is uh, ground coriander, ground parsley, some celery salt and a little bit of chili pepper. Oops, I made it a little bit of a mess there. And uh, actually I also like having some walnuts uh, on the surface of the seitan. It does give it a little bit of a bite, a little bit of a texture and also some nice flavor. Everything is set for the seitan to be cooked and I, now I just want to pan fry it a little bit from two sides so it kind of does not expand as much as it would have otherwise. Normally parchment paper or foil is used for seitan. Here you can see me struggle a little bit flipping the seitan to the other side. Uh, I lost my tongs at that point and uh, I just fry seitan on both sides um, and uh, then I add a little bit of broth around seitan and also cover seitan in broth so this side that has al already been fried is not too stiff uh, here you can see the temperature is boiling we want it to simmer and then we just cover it and leave for one hour while our seitan is cooking, let's cook some sides and let's start with some Brussels sprouts. Here I'm just steaming them while they are not too cook, just maybe par, par cooked. So then I can smash them, add a little bit of salt, add a little bit of paprika. If you like to use some oil, you can use some oil and um, roast them at around 180 degrees for 10 minutes in the oven. Look at how beautiful they turn out. If you hate Brussels sprouts, I swear you should try this. I have a short about it, so go check it out. Similar thing, I'm also doing it with the broccolis. I'm just not smashing them, but I'm roasting them after they've been steamed. And a similar thing with the carrots. I also did bake some potatoes, but I'm not showing here. Very simple. Friends, it has been one hour. You can see how Satan has expanded, but it's still kind of a little bit stiff on one side so I'm just coating it with some additional broth and I'm adding the broth so half of the seitan approximately is covered and leaving it for one hour covered. And voila, look at this, it's so pretty, oh my god, the flavor is so good. And now I'm actually doing one thing which I've never done before and I want to create some turkey skin. So for this I'm taking rice paper and I'm bathing it in some broth. Uh, I'm flipping the rice paper. I, I, I'm not good at working with rice paper. I always tear it apart. I'm just tossing the broth out of the plate rather than trying to I relocate the rice sheet itself. The hotter the water, the faster your rice sheet is going to get soaked. Now we're placing our seitan top part down and wrapping it all together, making sure that this rice paper sticks to the surface of seitan. Here you see me adding the second layer of the rice paper. I'm adding some ground parsley and coriander so it has nice texture and I'm sending it into the oven for 20 minutes and I'm bathing it in broth every five minutes and look at the final results my god the skin is so crisp
it did definitely take some time it's a very slow process to cook seitan in this way and i would just like to give you a couple of tips because i had my share of failures with seitan first of all the outer layer of your seitan can overcook and become too firm to the touch because seitan is a dough that you cook in the oven or however you prefer to cook it for this reason the outer layer can become just a little bit too firm just with any pastry it's going to feel a little bit more like bread than like meat so you don't want that in this case typically you would either cook it in a broth this is what we did here so when you're roasting the skin the rice paper skin in the oven please bear this in mind and just pour a little bit of vegetable stock every now and then so the outer layer of your seitan does crisp in terms of the rice paper does crisp but the seitan itself does not turn into a bread loaf another way to prevent it from happening is to wrap the seitan in parchment paper and then in the aluminum foil and cook it with the moist heat method either with the steam in a pressure cooker like I did with the burgers or you just boil seitan in the water and, and you kind of make a sausage if you use this kind of method that I use in this video your seitan is going to expand because gluten attracts water and it is going to attract water from the broth from the gravy however I didn't mind it in this case just keep those things in mind where is our seitan? it is here it looks like meat and the skin the skin is what kind of makes it turkey like uh, I would definitely recommend cooking this ahead of time this recipe does take some time Satan in general does take some time in fact if you look for other I hope it's not in my hair in fact if you look for other Satan recipes online you will find that some recipes include a letting Satan rest for 8 to 10 hours and this is just a lot of time so these two hours on a stove and 20 minutes in the oven is not that long i promise you it might take a couple of tries for you to nail it uh, just remember it's going to thicken don't be scared but uh, you don't want to be too soft as well thanks so much guys for joining me today if you like to come back please do subscribe to this channel i'm here every week and i'm going to be posting more and more christmas inspired recipes so you can serve them to yourself to your vegan friends and family as well as to some other non-vegans because i just want to share some inspiration for plant-based foods next recipe i will try to cook whole food plant-based i do personally prefer whole food plant-based recipes however i also do like making some mock meats just because you know we are different people out there and uh, you might have some cravings i just want to help you satisfy and if you're looking for high protein plant-based meals please do check out this video here i'm going to link a whole playlist and do check out this apple crumble this is a very simple way to cook apple crumble it doesn't require too much time too much preparation and the seitan looks amazing it's calling me and i'm going to go eat it and i'll catch you very soon bye, bye. it's not exactly like turkey it's very flavorful very nice the skin makes it feel way better there's differences of texture mm. definitely really nice not exactly like turkey but definitely not worse than that